All right, everybody, I think most of us are here. We'll give another minute and then we'll get started. Dr. Portella is working in the emergency room tonight, so he's not available for the meeting. Good afternoon. Um, just to make sure everybody is aware, we are now live streaming and broadcasting, so whenever you're ready. All right. Well, then, I will call the meeting to order at 6.02 on my time. Welcome, everybody. Glad to have everyone here. And um, I'm since we're on Zoom, I'm going to dispense with the opening prayer and the pledge. And I'll move right into approval of minutes. Everyone received a copy of the written minutes. Are there any changes, corrections, or additions to the minutes? Motion to approve. All right, so motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right, now we can do this by a voice vote, I understand. Um, uh, for minutes approval. Is that right, Jordan? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, I, I think we have to do a roll call vote, unfortunately. I, I'm sorry. All right, that's right. Can I can I just do what I normally do, which is accept the minutes if nobody has, a, has any yes. change? Yeah, if there's no objection to it, I think that's appropriate. Okay, well then, uh, I, I will then just say that We'll accept these minutes as written, seeing as there's no changes, additions, or deletions. All right, excellent. Dr. Brown. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, I think you probably need to do a roll call um, just at the start of the meeting here to officially mark who's present. Okay, I can do that too. So Angela, can you do a roll call for us? Thank you, Brian. Yeah, before I... Before I do that, Dr. Brad, I need to know who seconded the minutes. I caught Jim made the motion, but who was it that seconded them? I did. Mike That's right. Patrick. We're not going to do a we're not going to do a motion. We're just going to accept the minutes as read. Oh, uh, so, so which we're not won't doing require a motion. Okay. okay. So you're ready for the roll call now? Yes, please. Okay. Charles Mayo. Charles Mayo. Um, Kiplin Clemens um, indicated he would not be present. I don't believe he's on the line. Joe Morgan. Here. Jim MacArthur. Here. Um, Mackenzie Newkirk. Here. Okay, and Dr. Patella was absent. Um, Commissioner um, Fitzpatrick. Here. And Dr. Brown? Here. George Bell? I'm here. Dr. Silvernail? I am present. Okay. Those are all the committee members. All righty then. So um, now we'll go to approval of the agenda. Are there any additions to the yeah. agenda? Hey, Dr. Brown, I need to ask you to make two adjustments to the agenda, um, and I'll put it in the form of a motion if that's required, but uh, we need, we'd like to add the discussion of the county's uh, COVID vaccination policy to the items for discussion, and uh, more importantly, move the items for decision to immediately following the approval of the agenda and include the election um, of the chair and vice chair for this committee um, under the items for decision after moving that. Um, and that's all the otherwise accepted as read. Okay, is there, are there any other changes to the agenda? So now I'll ask for a vote on the amended agenda. So the agenda, uh, is recommended to be 
uh, amended to include a discussion of the county's COVID policy under items for discussion and under items for decision, then election of chair and vice chair. And we will do the items for decision immediately after approval of the agenda. So all in favor, um, we'll do a roll call vote. All in favor, say aye, and all opposed, uh, say nay. And uh, Angela? Okay, um, did Charles Mayo, I don't believe he got back on. He came on, so he's gonna be absent. Um, Joe Morgan? Um, aye. Jim MacArthur? Yes. Mackenzie Newkirk? Yes. Commissioner Fitzpatrick? Yes. Dr. Brown? Yes, aye. Dr. Silvernail? Yes. And George Bell? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the uh, agenda is approved as amended. So our first order of business then on the amended agenda is the election of the chair and the vice chair. And by our policy and practice, um, I will now turn the meeting over to um, Jordan, our representative from the county attorney's office. Hey, good evening. Um, so um, under the ordinance, uh, this committee is asked to elect a chair and vice chair at its first meeting in the new fiscal year. That's tonight's meeting. Um, so um, the rules for um, any voting member can nominate him or herself or any other voting member to be uh, chair or, or vice chair. We'll begin with the election of chair, open the floor for nominations. If there are multiple nominations, we'll vote in reverse order. Uh, the person getting the, the most votes would be the winner. Um, those are the kind of the ground rules. Um, shouldn't be, I think most of y'all have heard those. Um, are there any questions? from any of the members about those rules? Jordan, this is Joe, quick question. Um, our terms expired on 6-4, is that uh -huh. correct? Several of us, do we need to do that before we? So I, I do know that there's a, that's another item on the agenda. Uh, so people, you hold your term, you hold your office until some successors appointed um, okay. So th everybody is still appropriately in their position. And okay. so I think at the later there'll be a recommendation, uh, action and recommendation to the Board of Commissioners to reappoint a slate of people. Um, and so the answer to your question, no, we don't have to take any action on that first. Um, okay. If, if, if someone were elected uh, chair, vice chair, their terms up and they're not reappointed and someone new is appointed to their position, they would lose that position and we would perhaps have to elect a new officer um, if, if that were to happen. But um, Okay, thank you. Um, there's no other questions. I'll open the floor for nominations for the position of chair first. I'd nominate Dr. Michael Brown for chair. Any other nominations? I, I, I guess we could do this by acclamation, seeing there's no other nominations, but I, I, can we just do a roll call vote for those in favor of um, Michael Brown serving as chair? Angela, do you mind calling a roll call vote, please? Jordan, can sure. I ask a question? Sure. Is there any uh, provision uh, for the uh, chair to serve numerous terms? I'm, I'm okay with uh, Dr. Brown serving. I just, I don't know what it says in the, uh, in the bylaws. That, uh, if a good, good question. Uh, there's nothing in the ordinance that creates this um, committee that speaks to that in any way. 
and the committee doesn't have any separately adopted bylaws. So it's all set up by the ordinance and the ordinance doesn't address it in any, any fashion. Okay, thank you. Um, Angela, do you call a raw call vote for all those in favor of Michael Brown serving as chair, please? Sure. Um, Joe Morgan? Yes. Jim MacArthur? Yes. Mackenzie Newkirk? Yes. Commissioner Fitzpatrick? Yes. Uh, Dr. Brown? Yes. Dr. Silvernail? Yes. George Bell? Yes. Um, congratulations, uh, Dr. Brown, re-elected as chair again. I have a, um, I'm happy to do the same for vice chair or the chair. Go right ahead. Like go right ahead. Chair yet? No, go right ahead. Okay. Um, I, I have a three-year-old on my lap right now. So, uh, but oh, anyways. Well, would, you rather, would you rather I did it? I'll do it. I'll do it. That's okay. I'll you do wouldn't it. mind. I don't mind at all. All righty. Thank you. Thank you for the vote, everybody. I appreciate that. And I am nowhere near the longest serving chair yet, I don't think. So that's all right. Um, so now we'll do uh, the vice chair position and I'll open the floor for nominations. Dr. Brown, I'd like to nominate Joe Morgan for vice chair. All right. There's a nomination for Joe Morgan. Are there any other nominations? All right, hearing none then we'll do a roll call vote for Joe Morgan for vice chair. Angela? Joe Morgan. That's correct. Yes. Jim MacArthur. Yes. Mackenzie Newkirk. Yes. Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Yes. Dr. Brown. Yes. Dr. Silvernail. Yes. And George Bell. Yes. All righty. Congratulations, Joe. And thank you. thank you for being willing to serve. Thank you. So our next item uh, for decision then uh, are reappointments. And I'm, I'd like to handle uh, the reappointment in two ways here. First off, if I read it correctly, the first one, two, three, four, five uh, committee members are members of a committee based on the agency or employer that they represent. So if I read that right, Dr. Portella represents uh, uh, ECU emergency uh, uh, physicians, e EMS, uh, Kip represents Biden. Um, Jim represents the position of um, EMS director. George Bell is here as a representative of the EMS Rescue Association. And Mackenzie Newkirk is here as a representative of Pitt Community College. So as far as I know, we've received no additional uh, recommendations from their employing agencies. Is that correct, Angela? That's correct, Dr. Brown. All right, so sensing everybody is still willing to serve, I'd like to suggest that we vote on all those in one motion. And Dr. Brown, I, I would, if it's appropriate, I'd like to recommend all of the reappointments that are listed there, uh, including Joe Morgan. Well, you can, you can do that too. Um, if she's willing to continue to serve, I, uh, she's been a, a good member from the community to the board uh, would like to request that we send all of those to the commissioner for approval. All right. Is there a second to that? Second. All right. Dr. Silvanero seconds. Then uh, Angela, would you a roll call vote for approving the entire slate of reappointments to recommend to the county commissioners? Okay. Um, Joe Morgan. Yes. 
Jim MacArthur? Yes. Mackenzie Newkirk? Yes. Commissioner Fitzpatrick? Yes. Dr. Brown? Yes. Dr. Silvernail? Yes. And George Bell? Yes. All right. Thank you all for voting. Thanks, everybody, for their willingness to serve. And congratulations to everybody on the committee. Uh, again, I think this is an important committee, and I appreciate people's willingness to serve and willingness to provide guidance and recommendation to the county on EMS. All right. So were there any uh, EMS squads that signed up for comment? Not that I'm aware of. All righty, then we'll move on to uh, items for report. So Dr. Patel is not here, unfortunately. Uh, George Bell, do you have a report from the EMS Rescue Association? Nothing to report. Okay, thank you. Is uh, Eric here from GFR or a representative from GFR? Jesse Harris is here for Greenville. Nothing to report. Hey, hi, Jesse. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Is Jeff White here for non emergency transports? Yes, sir. Nothing to report that I'm aware of. All right. Thank you. Mackenzie Newkirk, any report for EMS training from PCC? We're staying as busy as ever over there. All of our EMT classes have been have been full. We actually even added in a class this semester, and that has filled up too. So we are now on a wait list for the 2022 um, PCC is open for business. Uh, we're hoping it's going to stay that way. And again, if, any, if we can ever do anything to help anybody out with their training, let us know. So how many how many EMT classes are you running then? I have two that have started within the past two weeks. Um, we, we're starting them now to get them done by the um, by the end of, well, I guess beginning of Christmas break. Uh, but, but yeah, they uh, we have a mostly online and a hybrid class that we've added to the schedule and they filled up as well. So I'm, right. I, we're, we're very blessed to have this many people wanting to come out and serve in our community. So we're providing the training for that. All right, super. Any questions for Mackenzie? All right, are you all back in the office too? Is staff back? Everybody's back in the office right now. Um, oh, good. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're back to normal schedule. Uh, again, hoping it stays that way. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Dr. Silvanero, do you have a report from the public health director? Sure, thanks, Mike. Uh, turn my camera on for a second. My official Pitt County Health Department t-shirt on tonight. Um, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, COVID continues to burn at a at a rapid rate in our community, uh, predominantly amongst unvaccinated folks. But we are seeing some crossover uh, estimates on uh, breakthrough cases in terms of folks who've been vaccinated or had disease range from about 18 to 25 percent. Um, we continue to offer vaccines daily at the health department. Uh, they're available by appointment or um, walk-in. Uh, you've probably seen in the news, we've got several uh, upcoming events uh, in the community. Um, uh, we've booked a series of clinics at the Piggly Wiggly in West Greenville to, uh, to try to reach into that community. Uh, we will be at the, uh, almost at the Chatham Fair, which is my home county fair back in New York, the Pitt County Fair um, from Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, we'll have a vaccine uh, booth there in the evenings to, uh, uh, to offer vaccines uh, and then are working with other groups to, to do some vaccine clinics. At my suggestion, Jim is working on a vaccine roundtable uh, to try and address vaccine hesitancy or reluctance among our first responders. And I will participate in that with some other uh, local uh, esteemed physicians, I guess. And that's it. All right, any questions for Dr. Silvernail? All right. Just out of curiosity, has the health department issued any guidance about in-person meetings? Um, 
not officially, Mike. Uh, we've suggested where we can to keep people apart. Um, uh, even in my own office this week, my I had a um, one of my key sort of command staff folks come down with COVID, uh, who has a contact with the management team and then throughout the agency. Uh, so that um, uh, raised some concerns for us. Had another person uh, that would work in sort of the core of the building in our medical records area who came up positive this week. Um, so nobody's exempt from COVID exposures and, and COVID headaches um, in, in their place of employment. We certainly have had ours this week. Uh, fortunately, I don't have very many folks that aren't vaccinated uh, or who haven't had the disease. So, so we didn't have to really quarantine anybody, uh, but, um, but we were lucky uh, on that one. Wow. Okay. Well, I hope everybody is okay. So far, so good. So. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, folks. Now for the emergency management director's report. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Brown, I have a good news item. Um, in the budget that we prepared for this year, uh, back in the spring, uh, we had set aside or we put in that budget to uh, purchase two new uh, ambulances uh, for this fiscal year. And the year finished strong and because of some CARES Act uh, dollars, um, we were able to go back to the commissioners our last board meeting two weeks ago and request to uh, purchase an additional two ambulances. So uh, we have placed an order for four new ambulance uh, to be delivered sometime in this fiscal year, we hope. Uh, the orders have been placed, uh, but by ordering the multiple units at one time, we were uh, able to save a little over $11,000 per unit uh, and our fleet uh, could use some refreshing. Uh, so it's, it's a good news item and the board was uh, very supportive uh, in uh, making that purchase. And that's my report. All right, great. Any questions for Randy? Yes, sir. Uh, Randy, any uh, estimate on when those four ambulances uh, might be delivered or even a guess? Uh, Three months, six months. I don't even have a guess at this point. Uh, the order has been placed, uh, and um, uh, we have requested from the manufacturer uh, as soon as they can give us a good guess uh, to let us know. We're waiting on that, but uh, the order has been placed, and we're just waiting to see how it lines up in their production. But as soon as we, we get that, I'll be glad to report back to the oversight committee. Thanks, Randy. All right, the EMS coordinator's report, Jim. Now you gotta unmute yourself. Sorry, that's the best that's part. Right. Don't have yeah. much. Um, Dr. Silvernail alluded to the round table that we're putting together. Um, that'll actually be on September the 22nd. I just hammered out a date right before this meeting. Um, so that'll be September 22 at 3 p.m. As of right now, we'll be sending stuff out to the wider the community to get that. Um, but that's all I have. I don't have anything else. All right. Do you want to say anything about the paramedic program recognition? Community paramedic sure. program? Yeah, no, that's a great lead in. Great intro, Dr. Brown. Thank you. No, I, was, I was just waiting for that. Um, would like It's an exciting news report. Um, Michelle Etheridge and our community paramedic program uh, was awarded two awards this year, actually. Um, the National Association of Counties uh, awarded her an uh, achievement award. But uh, the I think what we've been told, the more exciting of the two is the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners uh, presented us with an excellence and in innovation award. Uh, we were one of 50 finalists and then 10 award winners. So that was uh, pretty exciting. Um, Michelle's hard work continues to shine through and we are extremely blessed to have her on our team. So yeah, Dr. Brown, I can, I can send out the short video that uh, was done for her. I guess I could share it here um, if you wanted to see it, but. Yeah, either one would be fine. Uh, if it's short, we can watch it here, or you can just send it out to everybody. 
All right. Um, we'll go to the next report. I'll pull it out, and then uh, you can come okay. back to me in about a minute or so. All right. Super. Can I, can I just, this is Joe, can I ask the question, this, this round table, um, I thought I heard Dr. Silvernail said we, it would kind of be geared toward first responders and vaccinations, or is it public? I, I wasn't quite sure, Jim. It will be both. So it will be uh, primarily geared towards our fire and EMS community, okay. but it will be put together in such a way that um, other folks can get something out of it, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you. All right. Jim, uh, is it for people who don't want to be vaccinated? Is that what you're getting at, trying to get to? The, the round table we're doing? Yeah, so it's, uh, the, the premise was sort of vaccine hesitancy. So yes, it's, uh, you know, because as most of you all know, and you've I think pretty much everybody here has been a supporter of the vaccine efforts, but uh, everybody who really wanted to be vaccinated got it already. And so now we're really sort of, especially in the fire and EMS community, beating the bushes, as we might say, to get the people that are on the fence that for one reason or another um, haven't gotten it. And so it, there's been some initiatives across the state and the country where trusted, trusted officials, you know, the trusted leadership um, gets together and then, and, and speaks directly to the target audience in this case, you know, fire and EMS and, and the, the public that's not sure. And so um, the, the speakers that I got, it'll be a facilitated discussion sort of over zoom, but uh just for this board's information, um, I asked Dr. Silvernail to participate but, and also Dr. Portella, but then the other two members are Dr. Tripp Winslow, who's the state medical director, um, and also Dr. Herb Garrison, who is a, um, he's been a longtime physician here, former medical director for the Highway Patrol, well-known community advocate but also a, a very strong supporter of, of the fire departments and EMS and uh, things in general. So uh, um, I think it'll be fun. Those are a couple of different faces that a lot of people here don't see every day. Um, so that, you know, I'm hoping that we will get a good audience. And um, even for people who have been vaccinated, there's a lot of questions about the vaccine and COVID and the variants and so I think it'll be a good opportunity uh, for some local folks to be direct and upfront about the vaccine and COVID and where we're going. Does that answer both questions? Yes. Uh, can I ask one more along that line? And this might might be you or Dr. Silvernail. This is Joe again. So do we, we have like information from key informant interviews or anything that tell us why people might be hesitant um like are there I, I i know the 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 obvious is it's a new it's a new vaccine but are, are there is there information that would help guide the responses of silvernail and dr garrison and others patella in in terms of what to really address that i don't know uh, just the, the specifics of the question. Dr. Silvernail, you got anything on that? Yeah, Joe, I, that, that's a good point. I don't know if anybody's actually looked specifically at the first responder community, meaning fire, police, EMS, um, as to why there's such reluctance. Um, I know in our detention centers, about two thirds of the staff are unvaccinated. I think in our fire and EMS, Jim, you said what it's maybe at best a half that got that's vaccinated. So if if the if Pitt County EMS personnel are representative of the larger group, it's about sixty percent. Between half and sixty percent. Um, but in the fire department community, I think it's a little bit higher because our volunteer sample has a young a young crowd and then an other older demographic that helps to drive that number up. I think, I guess I think it would be interesting if, if we, even if we only 
found 10 people that were willing to talk before the 22nd um, that you could then inform um, the panelists, so to speak, um, of what, you know, what it is driving. I know a lot of people are just pretty quiet about it if they're not going to do it. Um, and the ones who do want vaccination are pretty vocal. Um, but I'm just trying to think some way that maybe we could get to the to the to the weeds here and try to figure it out. Um, and then the comments can hopefully address some of those. If, if there is a theme that's trickling through here, I don't know that there is, but I, I know it's hard work. Um, I was just trying to think of if you had a few key people and I would, you know, it, I, the other thing is, I don't know if you have anybody um, in this panel who has been, not the panel, but anybody within the fire community locally that's like seen as is really somebody that everybody just looks up to from the fire point if if they all if they were vaccinated and they were also willing to say 10 words so i know it's personal a couple, couple of things there the first one is um i'd be happy to try to push something out and see what the response rate from the the target audience is you know to see if there's some type of theme that comes back in the next couple of days um the the line of questioning and the the discussion as it were that's originally thought is um sort of down those lines anyway um and for me being primarily ems and our paramedics being um dealing with this now more than ever, I guess, more than they were last year, the, the main target was the EMS community. Um, and now we can take a look at the other part and see if it's appropriate to add another uh, member to this. If, if there's somebody that, uh, you know, I can drum up that, uh, well, for EM community, if that's who your main target, I, I was just trying to think of somebody that's gotten vaccinated. That's that's one of them, if you will. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I can talk to you more too, Jim, if you want later. Um, but I don't want to hold the meeting up. But no, no, I'm got you. I got you. We're good. And Dr. Brown, I've got okay. a film for you too. Can you see it? All right, great. Do, do right you see ahead. I can see it, yes. All right. You have to turn the sound on. I can't hear sound. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I will just send it out in the interest of keeping the movie of the, the meeting going. I'll send the link to everybody for you. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that though. That's great. All righty. Then we're going to uh, move to items for discussion. And our item for discussion was the county COVID policy. Jim, are you handling that or is someone else going to address that? Yeah, so uh, the the county commissioners approved um, at the meeting two weeks ago to put forward it, the, the name of the policy may be more appropriate as the testing policy and not the vaccine policy. But um, essentially what is required of us now is that um, county employees after this week are either fully vaccinated or submit to testing uh, weekly. And the way this affects the EMS oversight committee is I just wanted to present it to the oversight committee that the commissioners put this policy forward in the interest of safety of the citizens and county employees. And we have the eight contracted rescue squads that provide service directly on behalf of the county. And I wanted to gauge the oversight committee's opinion 
on would you like for us to take it to the commissioners and ask for this to be applied to the contracts with our eight rescue squads. So all of our contracted agencies fall under the same rules, play by the same sheet of music as it may be as the county EMS employees. Um, as it only makes sense to me that we were we ask at least there may not be a strong enforcement mechanism for us but we at least request that everybody play by the same rules now it's my experience so far that almost all of the chiefs of our squads have been vaccinated and have been assisting the county as a strong advocate for vaccination efforts um, and we really appreciate that and so just wanted to bring this before the oversight committee to generate some discussion, kind of get your opinions, get your thoughts, and then we can return those thoughts to the commissioners. All right. Are you looking for a, an official recommendation from this committee that would it, if, be there is, if there is if there is one, um, if you if you get consensus or somebody is willing to make a recommendation, then yes, I would be happy to have that. But if if not, then um, I don't think it's the end of the world. Okay. Well, let's open the floor up for some discussion then. Is there anyone who'd like to share their opinion about whether the we would expect the EMS personnel and the contracted squads to follow the same county policy that the county EMS staff would follow? So Want to raise your hand and I'll I'll call on people. I I do not see any hands raised. Doctor, can I go first? Yeah, please do, George. I would just like to say uh, last year, uh, I was hesitant at first to get the vaccine. Uh, I think mostly because of the uh, held over from childhood uh, fear of getting shots. I just don't like shots. I uh, don't think most people do. But uh, on advice of my personal physician, I, I did uh, changed my mind. I think not only fear of shots, but also uh, the the vaccines themselves were brand new, unknown, un, as far as I'm concerned, untested. So I, that's why I was hesitant. Uh, my personal physician uh, coerced me into it, and I certainly am glad I did. Haven't had any problems uh, with COVID so far. Uh, blessed or lucky or whatever you want to call it, I'll take it. Uh, and I have been an advocate uh, because of the, uh, especially because of the business that we're in. I think the EMS community comes into contact with COVID-19 more than anybody else. Um, well, I should, I, I should say the whole uh, uh, medical community comes in contact more than anybody else. So having said that, I am a, a, a strict advocate of uh, being vaccinated, uh, be, use use all the tools you got. Uh, if you are subject to, to catching COVID, uh, use all the tools you got to avoid it. Uh, it has proven to be effective, and I'm all for it. Uh, I would. My only question, uh, Dr. Brown, would be: Is it uh, the legalities are forcing people to take the shot if they don't want to? Uh, is that possible? Is it is it um, morally okay to do it? I that's a couple of questions that I have, and I don't know the answer to it. Hey, hey Chief, this is Jim. Uh, before he takes that question, um, the the policy as we're as we're discussing and what was put forward, the county didn't actually mandate the vaccine for anyone. What they did was. Uh, strongly encourage the vaccine for those that haven't had it, but also uh, have requested or are requiring for us that people who refuse the vaccine 
regardless of whether it's a medical necessity or a religious or, or just don't want it, um, they need to get tested weekly and demonstrate a negative test to continue working on the truck uh, or working in general. Um, and so that's how I think they got, a, got around the vaccine mandate that we all like to think. So they, did, they told us that you don't have to be vaccinated, um, but if you choose not to be vaccinated for whatever reason, any reason, um, then, then we need to submit the testing. And so that, that was why I was bringing it forward to gauge the committee's interest here. Um, and chief, if you'd like, I can also get a recommendation from this board, Dr. Brown and present it to the rescue squad association, uh, to get their thoughts as well. Um, but my initial interpretation was that the squad chiefs almost unanimously are supporters of the vaccine efforts and they've been advocates for us in that regard. Okay. No, absolutely. I certainly, I, I certainly support the, uh, the program uh, and I am in favor of it myself, but my only, uh, hesitancy, let's say, is forcing it on somebody who doesn't want it. And, and I, like I said, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. And Jim's, uh, you mentioned then that people aren't forced to take the vaccine though, but they would have to do weekly testing if they're not vaccinated. Correct. All, what we would be asking is, I'm, I'm asking. I'm just looking for the for the overall temperature in the room from this board, and I sort of got it from Chief Bell. Um, I, I think um, without anybody else speaking up, I think that the opinion is going to be very similar. Um, but we've been asked by the management team to bring that back to the management staff, and then also to the commissioners as they continue to discuss the policy that goes is into effect. Now right. you're correct that there is no forced vaccine. Um, you know, it, it's, it's encouraged, but member or employees that choose not to be vaccinated, whether they can or they can't, because there's some people that cannot receive the vaccine. Right. Um, they just have to submit to weekly testing. Right. And there's, if, if I'm, miss uh bringing that up as misinformation or anything there's some others on the call here that can be more specific but that's that's the nuts and bolts of it um and and okay. so it's a way for for people that that don't feel comfortable about the vaccine they have an out and uh their employment's not affected um what what we're asking to do in the long run upon getting all of these opinions is to include with our rescue squads, the same requirement. Right. Okay. So um, I'll open the floor up again. Is there anyone who wants to share their opinion of this? That's question number one. And then question number two, is there anyone who wants to make a motion for this committee to indicate its support for the entire EMS community uh, to follow the same guidelines. So anybody anybody want to share any opinion? This is Joe, it, it, it sounds to me, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but the two of the best tools identified to, to mitigate are either vaccine, and if not vaccine, then testing um, as a way to protect population's health and this this population this this particular group of of folks definitely you know are seeing some of the sickest of the sick i don't know if they're the cause of covid call or if it's just a call but definitely there's comp compromised health i would assume in most of the calls it, it seems reasonable to me the only question i have and i don't know how the county's doing it are are people out of commission until they get that negative test back each week? 
I don't believe so. Um, I, okay. I could defer to Dr. Silvernail or someone else, maybe more knowledgeable, but I think that it, uh, it's just predicated on the same rules, no symptoms, no exposures, and then the negative test. Yeah, Jim, provided this is a, just a surveillance test and that the individual being tested is not symptomatic and does not have a known exposure, there would be no restrictions against work or other activities uh, since sense. it is simply a surveillance test. Thank you, sir. And, and are these tests being done um, like still by like Biden or at that community testing site? Is that where we would, I mean, do people have reasonable access to testing and to my knowledge, they do. Um, okay. Dr. Sosnell, you want to grab that? Yeah. Right now, people can use any licensed medical provider. So that could be the Biden site, could be one of the pharmacies, uh, could be their private doctor's office, our point labs, um, any, anybody that's a licensed um, testing site. The only thing that we would, would the commissioners would not accept is a at-home test because there's no record to go with an at-home test. Right. So, so given that, are all those sites you just listed, is that, and forgive my ignorance, but is that a free service? Um, I, some of them bill insurance, some do not. Okay. okay. Because these contracts are not on our insurance, correct, Jim? They're just. That's correct. Right. Okay. I should just double check. Uh, unmute yourself, Dr. Brown. Darn, sorry about that. Uh, are there any other discussion? Is there anyone who wants to recommend a motion one way or the other as a recommendation from this committee to county management? Okay, hearing none, then we'll move on to our next on my business. Thank you, Jim, for bringing this up. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our next uh, uh, item, which I think actually was item for decision, and I apologize for not recognizing it, tucked on the bottom here, and that is to confirm our schedule for this year. And Angela put together a meeting calendar that she sent out to everybody. Is there anyone who doesn't have that meeting calendar? I'll just read it while I'm here. So based on how we met last year, then we would have our next meeting at on January 13th, March 10th, September 8th, and November 10th. That would be our meeting schedule for the upcoming year. So I need somebody to make a motion to approve this meeting schedule. So move. There a second? Second. Okay. And uh, Angela, when you do a roll call vote on this. Okay, who was that that seconded it? Mike Fitzpatrick. Thank you. Okay. Um, Joe Morgan. Uh, yes, prove it. Jim MacArthur. Yes. Mackenzie Newkirk. Yes. Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Yes. Dr. Brown. Yes. Dr. Silvernail. Yes. And George Bell. Yes. All right, thank you very much then. So that is our meeting schedule for next year. Um, a reminder that our next regularly scheduled meeting for this year is November 10th. And uh, that's a Wednesday. Is that right, Angela? That's correct. Uh, okay. Thursday the 11th is a holiday. That's right. Veterans Day. Veterans Day, that's right. So everybody make a note of that. Um, 
So our last item of business then, are there any questions or comments from the oversight committee members? Hearing none, I'll, I'll uh, take a motion for adjournment. Motion adjourned. There's a second. Second. And I don't think we need to do a roll call vote on this. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> All right, excellent. The ayes have it. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I look forward to seeing everybody on November 10th. And thank you for your input tonight. Thank you for your contribution to the committee. And happy motoring, everyone. Meeting adjourned. According to my, my clock, it is 6.52.